Hi, my name is Abdel Ali, and in this tutorial, I will walk you through all the necessary steps in order to get you started with the NLA5 development. Okay, so let's get started. The, there are three NLA5 based series. The first one is the NLA51 series, the second one is the NLA52 series, the third one and the, the new one, actually, is the NLA53 series. In this today's tutorial, I will be focusing on the NLA 51 series. Okay, so the NLA 51 series features four SOCs starting with the NLA 51 A22, the NLA 51 422, the NLA 51 802, and the NLA 51 824. Looking at the specs. All the SOCs in this series feature a Cortex M0 based MCU clocked at 16 megahertz. They all also have a 2.4 gigahertz transceiver. Three modes, three modes of uh, data transfer: two megabytes per second, one megabytes per second, and 250 kilobytes per second. They are Bluetooth low energy. Uh, please note here that the latest Bluetooth low energy version supported is 4.2. We all hear the maximum transmit power is a plus 4 GBM, a 128 bit for the advanced encryption system with the CCM mode. We for the peripherals we have the UART, the SPI, and the two wire interface. We also have a an, an analog to digital to digital converter. Uh, with the resolution ten, with the ten bit resolution. Okay, so uh, we also have uh, the AN support, but only for the NL fifty one four twenty two. We also have the AEC uh, qualified qualification, but only for the NL fifty one eight twenty four. Okay, apart from that, look into the RAM and the flash sizes. The minimum RAM on this series is 60 kilobyte. The maximum is 32 kilobyte. The minimum flash is 128 kilobyte, and the maximum is 256 kilobyte. In overall, if you look at the specs of these SOCs, it's a bit low. 60 megahertz is a bit too low for you know for uh, for an SOC. So these for that these uh, SOCs are mostly used as are mostly used as as a communication chip so it only handle, handles the wireless functionality of an application like in here so we got this is the NL51 this is an NL51 based module and this is the the MCU so the NL51 only handles the the wireless the wireless communication here i think it's the the bluetooth low energy and it is connected to the to the main mcu throat the spi or the UART, and this one gets programmed and this one gets programmed so uh, they talk to each other with the commands with the uh, you know to transfer data uh, back and forth okay or they are uh, they are used in uh, in small applications or like low end applications like beacons where you don't need much pins also the, there is no need for ma for higher performance okay now let's move on to the development boards so and this is actually the first step you need to follow so, uh, to develop application for the NL51 series, you need to have a development board. And for that, there are two development boards. The first one is the NL51 Develop Kit. Its PCA number is PCA128. 128. Uh, the onboard SOC is the NL51422. It's this one, so you, all, you also have the, the ability to, to, to develop ANT-based applications. Uh, it's supported. Yes, support development for all the in, in, for all the NL51 SOCs, and then we have an onboard 
debugger, the Sega G-Link, it's this one, and this is your SOC. The next developer board we, ha we have in the NF51 series is the NF51 dongle, it's PC NF PC A132. And by the way, these these PC numbered numbers are like the 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 board name in the SDK. So once you you start to do, to use the SDK, you'll find these uh, these numbers for the boards. Okay, so the onboard SOC on the uh, dongle is the same as the development kit. Development kit is the NF51 422. The dongle supports development for all the NF51 SOCs except the NF51. H02 and yes we also have a an onboard debugger it's the same as uh, the developer kit it's the Seeger G-Link so you don't need an external, uh, an external debugger to flash applications to the dongle it's on the back this one is the SOC okay so I do recommend getting a development kit then if you want a dongle get a dongle so don't get uh, just the dongle because you know if you look at the dongle we only have one two three four five six seven eight nine nine pins exposed it's different from the uh, the NFH1 development kit which which has where all the SOC pins are exposed okay Okay, so to buy a development kit, you need to uh, just head over to its page, and uh, again, all the the links are the and the and the all all the links are provided in the written version of this tutorial. I have uh, linked that in the description. Okay, so you head over to this of to its uh, web page. For example, now with the NL51 dongle, you just hit buy now, and you'll get uh, uh, directed to the to the distributors. For example, here we have the Symmetry Electronics, Newark, Avinet, Farnell. You just check here. So this one, uh, this is the price, this is the stock, the okay, just hit buy now, and you'll get redirected to the, to the distributor website, and you can buy it there, for example, here on the semiconductor store, that's it. Okay. Now to the second step, which is uh, the the getting the the software tools. Okay, so this, the first one is the SDK. So you need to download the the NRA five SDK. And please note that the latest version that supports the NRA fifty one series is the is the is the twelve point three point zero. So if we head over to the NRA five SDK. Uh, web page uh, this one you just hit download and you'll move over to the compatible downloads if you look on here this is the latest version is the 17.0.0 is the latest version of the NRA5 SDK but this version does not support the NRA51 development so what we need to get is is the 12.3.0 version it's this one this is the latest version that supports the nl51 because you know if we move on to the to the new to a newer version which is the 13 after the 12.3 the you'll notice this uh, uh, this release does not support the nl51 okay so just get that one click on here click on uh, the uh, the uh, 12.3.0 and here you have uh, the the two the two software devices available for those for the nrf one SOCs and this is the, your uh, nrf 5 SDK and you just download it okay now we move on to the next tool 
software tool you need, which is selecting a toolchain IDE. So for again for the NN fifty one series, we only have three toolchains supported, starting with the, with the RMGCC, AR, and Kyle. Kyle we have the the, the four the Kyle four version four and version five with no packs. So you you need to choose between the three. Next one is the NF command line tools. Okay, let me add it over to, to its uh, web page. It's this one. It's a it's a cross platform the desktop software, and this is the NF command line tools. This is a command line tools means it's not a there, there won't there won't be an interface. The 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 commands are done on the on the command line. And it is used for developing and programming and debugging of the, of the Nordic NN51, NN52, NN53, and NN91 series devices. This tool is mostly used at the end of development, where you flash, where you automate, uh, where you like automate the flashing of your firmware to the to your uh, to your devices. It can also be used in the development stage. Okay. You know, uh, you need to download to download that. This is move on to to the downloads tab. Select your uh, uh, OS here and select the latest version, and click on that link here to download it and install it for your uh, on your on your PC or system. Okay, the next one is the NF Connect for desktop. Okay, let's move on to the to its web page here. So the NNF Connect for Desktop is a cross-platform development software for Bluetooth Low Energy and Cloud IoT. NNF Connect for Desktop is a cross-platform cross tool that enables testing and development with Nordics products for Bluetooth Low Energy and Cellular IoT. With no, we, we are not uh, interested with Cellular IoT, which is for the Bluetooth Low Energy. It allows easy setup of connections with other devices and use these connections to read and write to external notes. Okay. The NF this tool comes with other tools. So you know when, when you download when, when you download the NF Connect for desktop, you will only also need to download the tools like for Bluetooth. This one uh, uh, supports the the Bluetooth the like a Bluetooth. Packet debugging, you can do that with the NF Connect desktop. Uh, for desktop, you can also use it for um, for uploading firmware to your developer kit. Uh, it is in its uh, it's mainly co to connect it to connect uh, to connect to your uh, SOC. Means that you can erase the shape, you can upload the firmware, you can uh, upload hex files. That's uh, one of the the its main uses is uploading the compiled hex files. So, for example, you have a hex file and a soft device. You can upload it using this tool. There is also other other feature that will be getting into in uh, in uh, in next videos tutorials. Okay, let's move on now to the next tool that you need to get, which is a a mobile app and a BLE Explorer app for your smartphone. So you need that to debug your services and characteristic. So, for example, say you have uh, you just designed a custom service, and you need to to to, to test it and see how see what's the what's uh, see what's the data you can send, what you can get. You can test that with this with this application before before building building your application, your actual application. For that, you can use the Bailey scanner, you can use the light blue, and also the NRF Connect. All these apps are available on the Play Store, as also on the App Store. Here on the on the App Store, you can just download them. Okay, that's it for this tutorial for today's tutorial for the NRF 51 series. Please check the description for the links, and thanks for watching. See you on the next one.